Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just told us the story of your near miss, Um, (laughs) yes, but like you said earlier, um, that you're so glad to be back and we are glad to have Uh, you back and here. And so you talked about in the message today a little bit um, about addressing some things further in postscript, clearing up some things, the most popular questions that people want to ask you about what happened, um, basically the medical side of it that we didn't talk as much about today. So I'm just gonna ask you a few questions about that and then we'll talk um, a little bit more about the message and some questions that came in about that. Um, So tell me, how are you feeling? I feel great. Compared to before? Well, now see, that's the thing. People, everybody says, so you must feel so much better than you felt before. And the truth is, I felt fine before, except in those instances that I described, like when I was at the gym and so what is that? But and I think that's must be why they call it the silent killer, mm. because I didn't feel bad. In fact, you know, the people who saw the video, because we had recorded that sermon on a Tuesday before this happened on a Thursday, which people saw the video on Sunday and said, they didn't look that bad. Well, I didn't feel that bad. So I felt okay then and I feel great now. So okay, it's stuff on the inside. So the other questions being, um, does this run in your family? Yeah, the hereditary well, see, diet, right. what would you attribute to right. the? I've been doing a little learning about that. Well, first of all, it doesn't run in my family. Uh, so, but there's uh, several things, you know, the, um, most people know this, but I've been reminding myself, there's nine markers that they say you're, you're always going to be wanting to look out for. And those are smoking, your lipids, like cholesterol, mm-hmm. uh, high blood pressure, psychosocial factors like stress, diet, alcohol uh, consumption, diabetes, physical activity, inactivity. Did I say obesity? Um, so that's nine. Well, I went through and said, hmm. I definitely don't have six of those. Um, I'm carrying about 20, 25 extra pounds. Well, I was, now that's down. Um, So I'm working on that one, the stress, trying to work on that. I don't exactly know how you work on that exactly, but, um, and and then there was maybe one other one, uh, not smoking, not, physical inactivity. Oh, the lipids. Yeah, my cholesterol was on the high end of normal. In fact, in my most recent checkup, I had said to the doctor, I said, you think I ought to take a a statin just to knock it down a little? And, And he had said, you know, we could go either way on your situation because you're within normal, but you're on the high end. And so we agreed we'll just watch it um, a little bit and see if I could bring it down a little bit on my own. <laughs> but then that night he texted me in the hospital, guess we're going on the Lipitor. And um, so, you know, the doctor said an interesting thing. Uh, he said, I know you're going to want to pinpoint why mm-hmm. this happened. And it's particularly frustrating when it doesn't run in your family. And when you don't drink and smoke and, you know, he said, sometimes people just get a condition. And he said, everything else looked good in you. He said, I I think probably a plaque moved and then got dislodged, got dislodged and then moved and then jammed um, right there. And he said, sometimes people just get unlucky. Mm -hmm. But then we agreed that the Lord had uh, more than taking care of uh, that unlucky situation. Well, I'm glad that you're feeling good now yeah, and uh, have your treatment. Um, so I know that you spoke a little bit about talking to God as you were going through the process, mm-hmm. and I know prayer was a huge part. Yeah. 
plenty of people praying for yeah, you. Right. And um, so the question that came in is around that today. And specifically yeah. it says, if God is in charge of every step, should we be praying for protection? Should we pray for healing? Does it make a difference? Can it change the outcome? Um, and I know in these moments, yeah. that's that's what you do. Yeah, what? Right. Yeah, and which is a great question. All of those variations of the question are great questions. Several thoughts about that. We know, well, what I wanted to try to emphasize in the talk was that God is absolutely sovereign and he's absolutely our loving father. And how those fit together, um, well, not so much the loving father part, but, but our, regarding specifically the sovereignty, how does our choice and our freedom f fit into that? The challenge I think for us, and I think the questioner is probably characterizing this, we want to make it either or. Mm -hmm. It either is all up to us and we're determining this thing and or it's up to God and he's already determined it. And but in scripture, it's both. And this is the great mystery. And so where does that line sort of where does the end of our free will and the beginning of his sovereignty, the end of his sovereignty, the beginning of our, how does all that, well, that's why I said, I've just decided I, I cannot, I, well, I'm not God, I'm not qualified, I don't have to understand, but it is both. And you see evidence of that. You see it like when you go back um, and you see Moses um, there, who in that situation after the Ten Commandments and the rebellious um, Israelites, and God is done with them. And just he's just so upset. And what does Moses do? Moses says, no, God. Mm -hmm. He pleads with him. He says, think about it, God. Think about it. Think how the Egyptians will just laugh if you wipe us out. Ha ha, they took them. Their God took them into the desert and then killed them all. You know, and so you really get the sense, okay, Moses was affecting the future, he, his intervening, his, his, his prayer, talking with the Lord, was doing some good. But then he is sovereign, and so in his great plan, I'm, obviously he knew that was what was going to happen, and they're the promised uh, chosen people, and they're going into the promised land, and that was going to happen. You know, so how does it all fit together? I don't know. Um, but Jesus himself said, uh, not if, but when you pray. So he calls us to prayer. Well, if that was a meaningless uh, effort, it, it's, why would he have said, I want you to do this? Um, and so clearly uh, there is, is an intertwining that is, that is going on that we really, that we, we can't exactly see or understand. And I heard one person, my father-in-law, in fact, was, he gave an illustration. He was talking about the sovereignty of God and the, and the free freedom of man. And he said, it's, it's sort of like this. If you were at a picnic and there was a big birthday cake and you had a pack of ants over here, and you know how ants will find their way to the sweets at a picnic. And he said, now suppose the ants are, are headed this way and you came along and you just, you put a barrier, you just put your thumb there as a barrier. Um, well, the ants are gonna go to this side or to this side, or they might nibble on you. Um, and then suppose the ones that are going way over here, you move your thumb there. Well, then they're gonna go here. And the point being, there is both going on. The, the ants are making choices and you in after watching their choices, uh, replacing your finger and, you know, sort of guiding them along the way. And I don't know, perhaps in God's great plan, that's a, a little concept of the great thing that he's doing that we really can't understand on this side. But I would say to the questioner, 
Definitely keep on praying. What were the other variations of the the, the question? Um, um, should we pray for healing? Sure, absolutely. Uh, because in, in, in we see in Scripture, d d d d absolutely do that. In, in James, uh, let's come together and anoint those who are sick and let's pray and let's fast and God's going to work. There's the expectation. And... But I love how you tied it back to in life or death, regardless of the outcome of the prayer, yeah. God's love is still never failing. That's right. It is. That's absolutely right. Yes. Um, so glad to have you back. Thank Great you. message. Back. Loved hearing your story today. You. Um, and um, we thank you for your questions. Join us back here next week with Rob Morris from Love 146. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.